the top story of the day. We've just been hearing about it there in the headlines. Of course, Suella Braverman, she has addressed an audience in Washington, D.C. Um, she's talking basically all about the global, uh, whatever you want to call it, asylum crisis, refugee crisis, uh, taking the mickey of systems crisis, other people are calling it. Uh, lots she had to say, lots for us to unpick. We're going to try and get into it as much as we can. So let's start uh, with a little bit of background, shall we? In January, the World Economic Forum said that migration will become one of the top five global risks in the next decade, ahead of national resource crisis, geoeconomic confrontation and environmental disasters. A 2021 Gallup poll found that 16% of adults worldwide, around 900 million people, would like permanently to leave their own country. 4% of those polled by Gallup, approximately 40 million people named Britain as their preferred destination. Now, she really was talking tough, but one of the focuses of her uh, primary frustration was the global framework. Let us listen. One of the most significant but underappreciated factors contributing to the global migration crisis is the global asylum framework. By this, I mean the various well-intentioned legal conventions and treaties that say, in effect, if you are fleeing persecution somewhere, you are entitled to make a claim for asylum anywhere. And irrespective of whether you arrived illegally or passed through multiple safe countries along the way, a country must consider it. Seeking refuge in the first safe country you reach or shopping around for your preferred destination are not the same thing. The extent to which the global asylum framework enables the obscuring of these categories creates huge incentives for illegal migration. She really was, uh, I'll start with you, Kelvin, on this. She really was talking tough. She's talking about, um, basically, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, this UN convention. She's saying it's all well and good. It was set up with the best of intentions, but now life has changed. Things have moved on. And basically, a lot of lawyers have got a hold of this now. And it has been squished and stretched and interpreted, interpreted within an inch of its life. And uh, some would argue been abused. Where are you on it? Well, uh, as she says in her speech, by the way, this... This is the speech. This is a great speech. Pro probably the most interesting speech on the subject that has ever been made. First of all, because it takes the emotion out and puts the stats in. The stats are horrendous. So to your point, in 1951, when the Refugee Convention was first introduced, it was going to affect about 2 million people. Mm -hmm. Now, according to a, a policy study I saw yesterday, that same convention now is 780 million. Our country, as far as I know and perhaps my socialist friend over there will disagree with me, is full up. Where are the schools? Where are the doctors? Where are the space? Where, are the, where, where is going to be the work? The reality is we do not want anybody else. I don't, I don't want boat people. I don't want illegals of any kind. There will be people who are being pursued by horrible countries, right? This is, we're not talking about these kinds of people. After all, as she points out, in, and Ms. Braverman points out in there, this can apply to women. Right. Well, when, as far as I know, they aren't, aren't under the cosh any more than the rest of us. And the gay community, we, the idea we're going to take on uh, the entire gay community of the world who feel oppressed is ridiculous. We have to change the rules. And I'm pleased that somebody, a Home Secretary, makes this point. And I'll tell you what was even more shocking was Yvette Cooper. The idea that when Labour get in, what they're going to say is, I tell you what, forget what Braverman said, come on down. That will be a vote loser for them. And it, more important than that, it's the wrong thing to do. And I might be able to get a clip of that uh, Yvette Cooper thing at some point. Um, one of the things that she was saying is that, and it got a lot of criticism, Joe, because this all leaked, as these things tend mm -hmm. to before the actual event. Um, she's saying that actually when it comes to the law and how the law has been interpreted around some of these conventions, there's been a shift away from persecution. You're mm. supposed to have had a well-founded fear uh, that you were going to be persecuted for reasons of race, religion, uh, whatever. Now she's saying it's moved away from this um, persecution to this, if you feel that you might be discriminated against, then, you know, you can progress 
claiming asylum. Well, I would love her love to see what evidence she's got to back that up. There is no evidence to suggest that other than more countries signing up to the convention, there are now 150 countries signed up to the convention. There's no evidence to suggest that its framework has in fact changed or be amended. Now, just to go back, if I may, to Kelvin's point about women, what do you think about women in Afghanistan? Well, I feel, I feel sorry for them, but they actually chose, actually, the country people chose to throw their hand in. So as the Taliban came over the hill, mm -hmm. right, not only did the Americans leave, not only did the British leave, actually, the Afghan, Afghan army left as well. And they said, come on down, we're going to allow you to run our country now. What can we do about that? That That's is not, not, a, that That's is not, not our responsibility, what happens within borders. You're so not suggesting, are you? Because on that basis, are you suggesting that the whole of Afghanistan come here, or the whole of Niger, or the whole of parts of Africa, wherever there is going to be yeah, a war, I asked a you civil a very war. Simple question. Well, Calm it's simple. Down. My simple uh, answer is but you they very and their men folk have to fight for what they believe in. So it's that's what they've got to so deal with. Could, it's it not was... my responsibility. I can tell you that. Right. So in short, I think it's not. You know, that's not on the list of the uh, Kelvin priorities. No, can I just uh, go on? Well, just to make the point that you know, women in Afghanistan are being persecuted. They're not allowed to go to school. They're not allowed to socialise. They are threatened with lengthy imprisonment if they are not properly dressed. So what are you suggesting? You're suggesting we take them all on? Are if you? you would maybe let me finish well, one well, sentence. Tell, just, just explain let to the, the viewers. Woman, explain let, to the so viewers. So what are you saying? Because there is but, an awful because lot. Of, the, because the point that you made. Michelle, about the difference between persecution and discrimination, which is what Suella Braverman was trying to make a point about, I would argue that women in Afghanistan are being persecuted. She presumably would say that's discrimination. I would say gay people in many countries in Africa are being persecuted because they um, face lengthy jail sentences, life sentences and even the death sentence in some countries. Now, at what point does discrimination and persecution meet Suella Braverman's criteria for a allowing anybody to want to flee a country? Do you think that there's a lot of people um, cottoning, cottoning on very quickly, uh, and they have been for a while now, that actually, if I say that I'm gay, well, that is a, a one-way kind of fast track to getting on to uh, this kind of asylum-seeking process? Well, Yvette Cooper said there was a figure of 2%. The Home Office's own figure is 1.5% of people coming to this country seeking asylum because of their sexual orientation, so I don't think so. Let's listen to some of what Yvette Cooper has to say. We've referenced her a couple of times now. We want to see proper international cooperation, both on tackling illegal migration and also on supporting refugees who fled persecution and conflict. But the moment the Tories are totally failing to get any grip on the asylum chaos, on the criminal gangs that are running along our border, on the hotel use that is now costing the taxpayer £8 million a day. And instead of setting out any practical plans, all the Home Secretary is doing is ramping up the rhetoric and looking around for someone else to blame. We should have a proper grip rather than the rhetoric and gimmicks that we always get from this Home Secretary. I think the Home Secretary has so badly lost any grip on the Tories' asylum chaos, which has been getting worse in the 13 years that they have been in power, that instead she is just lashing out, looking for other people to blame, to target people who are lesbian and gay, who face persecution in places like Uganda, uh, where they have been threatened with the death penalty, uh, is just uh, looking for scapegoats and targets rather than recognising her responsibility to get a grip of the asylum system, to tackle the chaos that we face and to go after the criminal gangs that are operating along our border. When you listen to that and she's basically saying, uh, look, Suella, she's not got any um, responses, she's not got any solutions here, she can't stop these boats, so now she's just basically saying, right, it's you lot over there, this kind of global entity. Is there a part of you that thinks she might have a point? No. She's got no point at all. I don't even know what her point is. What she seems to be saying is, this is what I suspect they're going to do, they're going to allow um, various embassies across Europe and across the world to be places where actually a potential, quotes, refugees, which is the point of Braverman's uh, uh, speech, basically, which is said, under, under the present circumstances, by the way, everybody's a refugee. Everybody. Everybody in Africa. Everybody in the Middle East. Everybody. Everybody. So... 
basically she's going to say, why don't you queue up over there and we'll allow you in from over there. Can I, can I tell you what that'll mean? Well, you, think, you think that's bad now, if you think the 40-odd thousand coming over on their boats right now, that number will be into the two, three hundred, four hundred thousand a year, every year. We can't do it. We have to simply say... And we don't want it. Where I do agree with her, and by the way, the idea that Labour are going to have any solution to this except come on down is ridiculous, is that the Tories are fearful of doing the right thing. Yeah, it's I mean, never wrong to do the right thing. The right thing to have done was actually my idea, which caused a big row at the time, which is actually the reason we have the SAS and the SBS is to go in and literally take out the smugglers. It is a war. In, yeah, it's a war. Well, yeah. It's a war. What else are we going to do? Well, Don't you view it as a war? Obviously, we do it condor <clears throat> rounding people up and shooting them. Um, but obviously, well, what would you, what would you do? What would you do if the country which they're operating from, we we'll say Belgium or France, for either can't find them? or don't know what to do with them when they do get them, what, what would you do then? Well, before, How are you going to deal with get, this? Somebody has to do something in dramatic. Fixing the problems of this society. I just want to hear from Joe. Let me just very quickly, before I go to the break, the point that people are making is there is a lot of people right across the world that live in different societies to ours where, I don't know, they don't regard education for women the same way that we as the Western world do. Are you saying, therefore, that actually the West should open its door to those tens and tens of millions of people? No, I'm not. And I think that the language that is used and the hyperbole from Suella Bravman and particularly from Kelvin just now... Congratulations. ..to talk about of hundreds of thousands of people... Not everybody wants to leave, but there is a truth that an awful well, lot more... 40 million, more... 40, in, according to Braverman, according to the research there, 40 million said, we'd like to, we'd like to be there tomorrow, and that comes out, only not... out of Africa. That's... This is what she's quoting in yes, her speech. In 2021 polls, at 16% yeah. of adults worldwide, around 900 million people would like to permanently leave their own country. That doesn't mean to say they're going to. Well, yeah, what they're saying is approximately 40 million of those named Britain as their preferred destination. But let us see the context of the actual question and in what context it was put. But when Kelvin talks about hundreds of thousands of people coming here and talks in terms of, you know, we've got to close our borders, it's a war, let's take them out. It is vile. It is Hatred. Okay. Okay. Let, let, let's, hatred. Let, let's, I let's told you it was going to be a feisty one. Let's just deal with that. The Times editorial, right, earlier in the week, right, said that if we were to be included in the EU, you know, this idea of parceling out, mm -hmm. right, at 13 percent, which is the size of our population, mm -hmm. that number will be 180 thousand. At that. At that, Starmer immediately threw his hand in and said, actually, having seen that number, or actually I always knew it was that number, we're not going to do that. We're not going to be part of the well, EU grip. So that is just the Times okay. editorial. And so you may have a view about my views, but surely you're not going to start taking on the Times editorial. Are you? But 175,000 right now are sitting waiting in limbo, right. costing the taxpayer... Yeah. Well, I don't want the them here either. But, I don't want them here but either. But you will know, Kelvin, that most of them, about 75 to 80%, actually get their asylum... Um, I do, know, I do know process. that, and that has got to change. Why? That if has got to if change. They're valid I, because and they're we are going to change the way that we view the word well, let's refugee. Talk.